You know what they call intimidation? Intimidation, hear me? Hallelujah. Intimidation is anything done in order to make you fearful. Now, intimidation is anything that is done in order to make you afraid. Now, and one of the things the devil does to keep several Christians on his spot is that he does some things to make us afraid of going forward. Then people begin to think that, ah, ah, are you sure it is going to be possible for me to go forward? Now, the devil's intimidation could be one medical report. You know, a medical report that makes you believe, you know, makes you afraid of the future. You know, there are medical reports that can make a person to be afraid of the future. That you're afraid. Are you sure there's hope for me again? Now, that is one of the ways by which the devil intimidates. Now, in the case of Peter here, he was walking courageously upon the waters until the devil steered up a wind. He saw the wind. Now, what the devil wanted to achieve with that wind was to make Peter to see himself, I don't think I can do what I'm doing anymore. Ah, a ordinary woman being, how will I be walking upon the sea? Now, that's why you see, when Jesus stretched forth his hand to rescue him, he looked at him and told him, your faith is little. The reason why you sank is because your faith is little. Now, if your faith had been strong, you wouldn't have bothered about the wind. So, the devil has intimidated so many people. You know, now that God has told us that the year 2022 is a year of expansion, the devil wants you to remain stagnated. That's why he's doing everything to make you think that you cannot be better than this. But I want you to know, you will be better than this. You know, I've always told you here, if you don't set yourself free, nobody can set you free. And one of the plans of the devil is to make you to believe in his lies. To make you continue to think that we die, this I'm going to die. I cannot be greater than this. That's one of the things the devil does. But let's look at it from the word that I've prepared. I gave an, a, a simple reference at the introduction here. For 40 days, one man came out and was challenging Israel because he was what? Nine feet tall. Now, to be nine feet tall, like me now, I'm 5.5. Now, it means to get nine feet, you have to put like what? 4.5 on top of me. I know, 3.5 on, on top of me. Now, and if you add 3.5 to me, sir, my head will go across this ceiling, which means I will have to bend to stand in the church. So, this man kept on coming. If there's anybody in your midst that can challenge me, let him come and show up. And to make it worse, the Bible says they look at his shield. It took one human being to carry his shield. And they were afraid. They look at his javelin. The Bible talks about the, the, scale, the weight of the arrowhead. You know why the devil did all these things? To keep Israel from progressing. So for 40 days, two times a day, 80 times, Goliath was coming out every blessed day. And nobody could come out. That testimony was, was, was delayed because there was nobody courageous enough to come out. I pray in the name of Jesus, as I teach today, every intimidation, the intimidation over your life ends in the name of Jesus. Let's go deeper. Let's look at, about, let's look at five things the devil hopes to use intimidation to do. Five things, or can we put it this way, five reasons why the devil intimidates people. Five reasons why the devil intimidates people. Five reasons. We'll take them one after the other and stop wherever time permits us. In the second service, I'll be looking at the, the devil's strategy to intimidate you. But in this service, let's look at five things the devil hopes to use intimidation to do. Number one, it could create an inner urge in you to want to prove a point when it is not necessary. Now listen, I come again, it could create an inner urge in you to want to prove a point when it is not necessary. Do you know that there are times it is not necessary to prove any point? Now, why did I say what I'm saying? 
at times the devil could steer up people to intimidate you so that you can run into looking for ways to give them results. And you will, ah, uh, and you will. If you look at mommy, she me lori, she no shop kumbulo ino leshiwa. If it's Timothy Moimo, that be three years ago. Ah, oh my God, you know. They may say it not because they, they want to say anything, but because they want to steer you. And you too, because you have heard what the person say, ah, one fee boomy, good shop, kekere, ni mowa. You know, you now begin to say, I'm going to make sure I do everything possible to get a shop at Bodija. I want to show them. See, let your God be the one to show them. If God has not given you answer and you are trying to look for answer at all costs, you will do it at your own expenses. And if God is not the one, so, uh, 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 if God is not the one sponsoring you, I'm telling you, you are calling for trouble. One of the things that intimidation does, listen, that's why you must understand this thing. You are in a journey of destiny. God is the one leading you. Don't try to prove anything to anybody. Somebody looks at you and tells you, ah, sister, are you still single? The next thing you are looking for every brother in church. Hello, brother, I'm available. Hello, brother, I'm model. If I look condition you. Not because you love the brother, but because you just want to prove them wrong. Praise the Lord, church. Don't let the devil push you into, uh, into trying to get results at all costs. You don't owe anybody any answer. Am I communicating? Now, there are so many people that have entered into debt today because they want to prove points when it is not necessary. Listen, when it is necessary for you to prove a point, God will be the one to prove it for you. Look at the way they abused Anna now. We used Anna at the prophetic prayer. Ah, barren woman, barren woman. But what did she do? She went to God. Anna did not look for any other means but to face God. When God Gave us Samuel. What happened to Penina? Penina shut up. In fact, one Samuel that God gave us silenced all the other children. We didn't hear anything about the children of Penina. We were only hearing about Samuel. We were only hearing about Samuel. So one of the things that intimidators do, uh, do and like I told you, the devil is the father of intimidators. He's the one that we want to do everything, steer up people. To make you want to give them results at all costs. I wrote here, this could drive you into searching and stretching yourself beyond normal. It could, it could, it could, it could motivate you to stretch yourself beyond normal. It could move you into unhealthy competition. I wrote here, you have nothing to prove to anyone. Do you know why? We are not running the same race. God will not start our lives in the same way. I have seen people in life that in the beginning of their life, God started with them by opening doors of financial opportunities. And I have seen people in life that God started by, by, by opening their doors to what we call having truth of the womb. They started by raising family. I have seen people that God opened the door of their life by giving them international connection. Your prayer should always be, Lord, I am a vessel in your hands. Just let your name be glorified where? In my life. I am a vessel in your hands. Now look at how they provoke Jesus, but Jesus did not allow himself to be provoked. Matthew chapter 26. Put it on screen. From 52 to 54. Matthew 26 from verse 52 to verse 54. They were telling him, if truly you are the Messiah that we are waiting for, uh-uh, uh -uh, why would this be happening? What he Buddha? Now listen. Then said Jesus unto him. He responded. Put up again thy sword into thy place. For all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. He was talking to Peter here. Peter, let's move on. Think it thou that I cannot, I cannot now pray to my father. And he shall do what? Presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. Don't you think I can pray? Why are you thinking you can defend me? They've come to arrest me. Now you brought out your sword and cut off their ear. Don't you think if I want to be delivered, I can say to my father, Father, give me 12,000 angels now, a legions of angels, and they will come down. But listen, he said, but how then shall the scripture be fulfilled that thus it must be? 
that if I call my father now to bring down angels and he kills all of them, how will the scripture be fulfilled? Which means that there are some things that have been written concerning us. Hello? No matter how they intimidate you, don't run the race of trying to give them a resource that God has not given you. If you run towards anything God has not given you, hear me, you put yourself into trouble. Let God be the one answering the devil. There are, there are stages and phases in life. If you serve God, listen, I love Psalm 23 very well. You serve God, it started with what? The Lord is my shepherd. Avi? Uluwani, Ulushwa Gutomi. He went further to say, put it on screen for us, I shall not want. He leads me beside what? Still waters. Now, not a water that we will be struggling with people over. He now says, he make me to lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside the still water. Now, move on. Sweet part. God is still the one leading up. He restores my soul. He leaded me in the path of righteousness. That is the teaching of walking in his ways for his name's sake. Now, but look at verse 4. Yes, God is still my shepherd. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow, why will I be walking through the valley, the, through the valley of the shadow of death when God is my shepherd? It means that, listen, even if God is the one leading you, it does not mean that the pathway will be sweet. Let's read on, let's read on. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, ah, at such times, somebody will say, maybe God has left him. He says, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Can you see that? It is not because God left him that he had to go through that valley. He had to go through that valley even when God was with him. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they come. You know why the rod and my staff is comforting me at that time? Look up, church. You know, he has his rod in one hand. He has his staff in one hand. His staff is the staff of leadership. That's the voice of the Holy Spirit. When you are going through the valley of the shadow of death, my son, my daughter, don't worry. Doors will open. But the second one, look at it. He said, my rod. What does he use the rod for? The rod is for, for, to inflict punishment. Now, in case you are going out of the way, he punishes you to come back. Then the Holy Spirit will comfort you to stay in line. But listen, if you don't give up, what will now happen? In the next verse, they comfort me. Then in verse 5, you have to pass through verse 4 to get to verse 5. He said, now, thou prepared a table before me where in the presence of the enemies that were mocking me, that were trying to intimidate me. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. May you receive the grace to, the, to be able to wait for the time of his visitation for you in the name of Jesus. May that grace be available for you. Then he says, that table is prepared. I want our nearly Ah, in the presence of my enemies. Now, in the presence of the enemies, you begin to celebrate. You say, ah, upon all we did to stop him, to stop her. So eventually, it has happened at last. He's blessed. She's blessed. Doors have opened. Now the Bible now says, God will not stop there. He said, thou anointed my head and my cup runneth over. Now listen, let's not miss the teaching. Let's come back to what I'm saying. Whenever there is intimidation around your life, the devil will want you to want to give them an emergency result. Don't run that race. Brother, one lay forty, Emma Fongo command, Emma Fongo command lay, Emma Tati, Emma Tun Concon Yo. Brother, 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 now I'm sorry, ah, my sorry, ah, my make it, ah, my thing, come on, but what of thing, come on, don't run that race. That's one of the things the devil wants you to do, and that's why he's using the mockery of men in order to try to intimidate you. See, I will not fall. I didn't hear you clearly. So you see what Jesus said? He said, I can tell my father. I can tell my father, but I won't tell my father to bring angels down. Why? Because it is written concerning me that I must go through what I'm going through now. Now to summarize that first point, never allow anything or anyone push you into unhealthy
competition. Did you hear me? Don't allow anything. Don't allow anyone push you into unhealthy competition. Don't allow it anymore. Don't allow anyone or anything push you into unhealthy competition again. Hallelujah. If somebody has built a house and they are mocking you, he has only built his own house. He has not built your own. It's Mrs. Christopher here. He has only built his own house. Somebody goes to America and you are still in Nigeria, he has only go, gone to what? His own America, not your own. Number two. Number two. Let's look at what the devil in, use, uh, intends to use intimidation to do. Number two. It could create the fear of trying new things in you. The devil doesn't want you to try new things. So he wants to use intimidation to create the fear of trying new things. Harry, Harry, Harry. People say things and they want you to be afraid. Ah, ha. Ah. You know, and when you are afraid, you won't, you won't want to try new things. You'll be saying, if I fail, what if I fail, if I fail, they will laugh at me. Oh, listen, let me tell you this truth. Whatsoever the Lord is placing in your heart to do, do it with your heart. If you fail, you know what you have just experienced? You have just learned how not to do it. In every failure, there is what we call a lesson. In every failure, pick the lesson. Correct. And move on again. Yes, I failed. Ah, that relationship, I didn't undo it well. It does not mean I won't get married. It does not mean I say, okay, I want to go and join sister. Sister is a calling. Father too is a calling. Don't say because ah, I won't be really disappoint me. I won't be really disappoint me. Definitely, I won't be really old. Me ni marry. My love my form father. My love join father. You will not be fulfilled if you get there. Because that's not your calling. Hello, am I communicating? Hello? So don't be intimidated to the point that you now be afraid to try new things. Some of you, there are some things God has placed in your heart. You are afraid to do it. Why? You are afraid of what people will say. Sir, can I tell you this truth? The mama preached, yes, last week. I watched it. I will continue from there. The same people that told the blind man, shut up. When he was shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. We are the same people that said, he's calling you. Thank God that the blind man did not do what? Shut up. <laughs> and they were saying, shut up. Shut up. Oh, come, party, one job. Shut up. The blind man said, I will, I, will, I will call more. And later the people said, he's calling you. So the devil ra raises his intimidating voice using his agents in order to create in you the fear of trying new things. Listen, the devil, sorry, the devil hopes to finish you. That's why you must not give up. I, I, in my study, I love the fate of these three people. I wrote their names down. Look at the fate of Esther. When Mordecai said to him, go and see the king. He said, ah, there is a law. Anybody that goes to appear before the king now will be killed according to the law of medicine. It's an ir irrevocable law. But after fasting and prayer, you know what Esther said? If I perish, I perish. I will go. But did she perish? No. People that try the new things that God said they should do, they don't perish. When God is giving you an instruction, follow it. Even if it is new. When they were announcing the barrier of the man that started sachet water in, in Nigeria, he's, he's, a, he's late now, he's a very old man, he died at a very good old age. That's deal bottle water. Uh, by sachet water. They said, the first man, before what we knew was ice water, Today, who will buy ice water again? Everybody's drinking sachet water. It got to a point, somebody too came up and said, we can do, uh, because in those days, eh, there were only two bottled water that exist. 
spring water and ragulis water. In those days, if you don't drink spring, if a spring water was the first, later, ragulis came up. But today, hot cake. God, God can put things in your mind. Don't be afraid. If, listen, let me tell you this truth. Somebody said, I believe, and I've added it, I, I'm using it. He said, if you fail, failure is a compulsory course in the school of success. It's, it's compulsory. You must face it. But even when you fail, you know what you should do? Stand up. Pick the lessons and move on. But you know what intimidators will do? Ah, Mpreke, Ututibere. Ututibere. Eh, Anu Eshemi. Anu Eshemi. Shuri Awokon non soro. E mi e shuti o feko ube in kontutu shenye. Lo nte no wan soro. Lo wana ama wke ha. 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 Kimi kin wa shiba. Ha. Ha. Shikin de try ba. Ha. Timba try e timti oba lo walking ko. Ha. Ha. He. Ha. Ujemate. Eh. You are telling yourself, Ujemate, Ujemako, okay, okay, Unjay, Timba soon get him your any jenko. Ha, ha, Chikuni waste by, Chikuni waste by, ha, 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 Uluani Kimbere, Jotima, that church select, choose any go to Wanko, ha, ha. We that are your pastors, eh, we obeyed the call. I remember there was a time we wanted, we started service. Nobody came to church. I was waiting for people, I did opening prayer. Nobody came. I did praise and worship. And I was the one beating the drums. Nobody came. After I beat the drums and did praise worship, the only person that came, I wanted to start preaching. He said, I only came to tell you that my mommy sent me errand and I will not be able to come to fellowship. Ah! It almost wanted to kill my zeal. I preached 20 chairs before. Intimidation is one of the, the weapons of the devil to kill the you in you. Say, I refuse to die. Say it like somebody that understands. Say it like somebody that believes. I refuse to die. Now, look at the second example. I wrote that example here too. The three leopards. The Bible says there was famine all over. And the three of them said, if we stay here, we'll die. If we go back to the, our land, we'll die. Let's try something new. Let's try to see if we go to the Assyrians. They might free us. And they saw that that was the best option. They took step. And as they got there, there was nobody in the tent. They had more than enough food to the point that they now became distributors of food. Another example again is Ruth. Father-in-law, dead. Husband, dead. Mother-in-law was going back to town. And the mother-in-law said, my children, go back. Even if I give back to his son, will you wait for him to grow before you marry him? Go back. But Ruth said, where you go, I will go. Where you die, I will die. Your God shall be my God. And your people, my people. Now, what am I saying? Don't allow the intimidating force to stop you from doing new things. Pick up your gifts again. Pick up your talents again. Yes, they mocked it out of you. Ah, what have they said to you? I will, I will give you more practical in the second service. What have they said to you? Don't see some power. I remember there was a time I would be preaching and one of our members would be writing down my grammatic error. Where I'm supposed to use uh, come, I use came. And the person will write it and laugh. And me, I know that. Ah! And after service, one must say, okay, sir, and they make our grammatical error come. Then the fear of the next service will occupy my heart. By the time I want to start preaching, one day I just came up. I was not sent to preach English, to, to teach you English. I'm not your English teacher, I'm your pastor. If you mean an English class, call it what? And I started preaching. And today, to the glory of God, I have taken this gospel to places that even me myself least expect. What of if I have allowed that person's action and voice to kill me? Tell your neighbor, I refuse to die. You are not talking like you believe. Shout it aloud! Take number three. We don't have all the time. We are looking at the things the devil 
uses intimidation to achieve. Number three, they want you to see yourself as inadequate. They want you to see yourself as inadequate. Now, you know how they hope to do this? We show you. We raise people that will show you your uh, the area of disability. Look up. There is no body that does not have areas of disability. Go search scriptures. Go send it on. So you know what the devil will do after to create, to intimidate you, to make you not to see hope in yourself again? He will show you your area of disability. The devil have told people like that on their sick bed. You, one of our sons was sharing with me. He's now a father of two sons now. He said in his place of work, they brought one machine that they want to run tests for all the staffs. And they put the machine on his hand. And the machine started bringing out results. And one of the results, the machine said, low, extremely low sperm count, that there is no how he could ever get a woman pregnant. He said the moment he had it, he ran to the church and came on the altar here. Ah, one in the phobia, hello you. She mean the kubaya will be by. And, I, and he's married. Will I not? It means I will I not put my wife into trouble? Now that they have told me that I cannot impregnate a wife. That's what human beings can do. Did the machine lie? No, the machine did not lie. We all have area of what? Disability. But listen, one thing I know with God, let me show you. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27. Look at this. I noticed this with God. Whenever God wants to do his miracles, he looks for people with areas of disability. In fact, he looks for people with special disabilities. Look at this. Hmm. But God has done what? Has chosen the foolish things of this world to do what? To confound the wise. Wait for me. There was a time, I don't know whether he's still the richest man in the world for now. There was a time the richest man in the world, Bill Gates, was not a graduate. He dropped out from secondary school. Now, imagine, richest man in the world. Everybody will expect somebody with four degrees. You know, we have in our church like that. People that have, that have got one Somebody graduated as an engineer, went back to school, graduated as an accountant, went back to school. Grad I asked her one day, Akile Feda, madam. No, I'm not discouraging it. It's good. Very, very good. Take any laps to that place for me. Now, go back. God specializes in using the what? The foolish things. That's why if you are foolish in any aspect of life, don't write yourself off. Are you com com am I communicating? A sister came to meet me in church. Papa, I don't understand what is happening. I said, what is that? About four brothers have received me. In my heart, I said, where are you? That's in my heart, so quotation because the sisters are no fine. I look at her, and it's four brothers, and receive another. He said, Four brothers. Book more than Sophie Luani, you want Yaomi, Eleni, or Luani, you want Yaomi, Papa, and you about me pray, me fashion, you Tani came mooning now, Mary, Mutu, I do me, I put you me, you know that, and you know that. And there are sisters in church that I'm telling you the fact they have all the things that the man will say, ah, these are the ones that are supposed to say, Pastor, Papa, Papa pray for me. Brother won't kill me with, with revelation. They are the ones still pray. A young man came to see me. He stood here, sir. You know, all women love tall, have you? huge, tedious. This guy had everything. He stood in front of me and he had a very good job and he was crying. 
I said, brother, why are you crying? He said, sir, there is no sister that wants to marry me. Hey? I said in my heart, are they blind? He parked his car outside. Tell your neighbor, say life. So anytime the devil is showing you your disability, you know what he's trying to do? He's trying to intimidate you to make you believe that there is no hope for you. When the Bible says there is, a, there is hope even for a tree, when you cut it off, there is hope for it. Just let it perceive the saint water. Now let's finish that scripture. Let's finish that scripture. Is somebody catching fire now? So don't be intimidated. The, the people that just won the, this, this president, that Senegal, that won the nation's call, they are captain and they are major player, Sadio Mani. I was reading his story. Sadio Mani said he was playing football in his town, in his village, and he heard that if he travels to another state, the capital of their, 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 their country, that he will get big, better opportunity. So he said he traveled. Borrowed money, traveled, trekked small, got to the capital, got to the club where they are practicing. He said, and he, they said, okay, play. He said the coach called him out and said, there is no full football sense on you. Oh, Nirara, you don't have football on you. You know that some people, when they, they wear football jersey and knicker and their, canvas, uh, their boots, you think these ones, they can play anything. But give them the ball. He said, the, the coach, you don't have anything. Or you don't have it. So he was begging. I don't mind staying in the club, packing jerseys for you. After training, I'll pack jersey. After training, I'll uh, arrange the, 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 the place. That was how we started. Then he said, I don't mind if I'll be playing. Just be getting five, five minutes or some minutes to play. For free, don't pay me anything. Today, if you enter Senegal, mention Sadio Mani, there is nobody that doesn't know him. Every footballer is open to be like Sadio Mani today. God chooses the foolish things of the earth. Don't write yourself off. Don't let anybody make you feel it is finished for you. Are you hearing me? No matter what they say, no matter what they are saying about you, but don't listen. These are traps, tricks of the devil. Because see, hear me. The greatest person that can kill you is you. And the greatest battle you need to fight and win is to win over yourself. If you cannot win yourself and you win the whole world, you, will, you are still a loser. Am I communicating? Tell your neighbor, I am the one that God has chosen for greatness. We are not yet true. Let's read on. Let's read on. Let's finish that. You know, I told you five. We are still on number three. Now, let's finish it. It says to confirm the wise. And God has chosen, look at God again, the weak things of the world to confirm the things which are mighty, the weak things. You know why several people here have not experienced the miracle? Is because some of you are still looking at your disability. When God gave us our first child, we didn't, my wife wasn't seeing a menstrual flow. The doctors told us until they find it, she cannot be pregnant. So we were looking for it. Sister, sister. So because of that, you have started to dress down. That's the reason for the delay. Because of that, anybody that comes your way, you just accept. Ah, me my femi. That's the reason for the delay. But come on, lift your shoulders high. Believe in whom God say you are. And continue to present before God. Your choice. I don't just want any ordinary man. He must be a working man. A man that can be a blessing to me. 
am I communicating? Because God chooses the weak things of the heart. So if anybody is showing you your area of disability, don't bother. Agree that, yes, I have disability. I agree. Just like I told you that those days when I preach, they write down my error. But today the story has changed. Let's move on. I want to do some readings here. Hallelujah. The picture of I can't, I don't call it. What is what the devil wants to remain in your mind. That's why ability. Oh, no, no. I've done both. Yeah, yeah. That's why I'm. The picture of I can't. I don't qualify. In fact, one of the, th the teams that came to Nations Cup with a local coach is Senegal. Every other, almost all, came with foreign names. Believe in yourself. You keep telling yourself, no matter what the medics are saying, no matter what the situation is, you keep telling yourself what God has promised you. I told you now, before I got married, I had the names of my children in my diary. My wife has never discussed with me before over the name of any child. She would just ask me, what's the name of the child? And she used to see those names on the day of naming. When we gave uh, Onyola, Onyola, she asked me, what is the meaning of Onyola? I said, the honey is our wealth. Baby, no, she's born here. <laughs> don't, let, don't let the devil show you and magnify those disabilities. Some of you are now thinking, well, maybe this time I'm going to die. You will not die this way. I can't hear your amen. <laughs> A pastor Dio, she had cancer. They gave her uh, some days to live. Some days at UCH here. They wrote it, waiting for her to die. And her pastor said to her, go and discharge yourself from the hospital. You know, some of you have not got to trust us to that point. That's why when we give instructions, some of you don't follow. And she went to UCH and discharged herself. And you know, if you discharge yourself against medical instruction, you must write an undertaking that if it backfires, you will not return. She signed it. Her pastor now said to her, empty your bank account. Go to the camp, redemption camp. Put the money on the altar and come back. She put the money on the altar Waiting to come back after the vigil. Pastor Adibwe that did not know what happened. Was just preaching. He was preaching and preaching and preaching. And said, daddy said there is somebody here. They've given you your death date. But daddy said he has changed it. Pastor Dio is still alive today. Over 10, 15 years ago. He's still, she's still alive. Doing exploit in the kingdom. Say, I refuse to die. I didn't hear you. You can do better. Let's take number four because of my time. So the fourth thing the devil wants to do. They want you to come to them for help. They want you to recognize them as the only hope you have. That's why they are intimidating you. They want you to come to them for help. So that you come and be saying, Mommy, 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 okay. Daddy, Daddy. Say never. Don't ever, don't ever succumb to that point. That's one of the reasons why they are spreading news of intimidation. Ah, she be in Ah, ah. She church in your grow because you are me. Uh -uh. that's why they are saying all they are saying. They want you to come back. Now come back to do. They want you to come back to them for help. It happened to Jesus in Matthew chapter 4. 
something. The Bible says in chapter 4 from verse 8, the devil came to, the, uh, to Jesus and said to Jesus, he took him to the pinnacle and said, come and see, look, all these things belong to me. Bow down to me, Jesus, and I will give them to you. You know what Jesus said in verse 10? Please put it on screen. I want all the eyes to see it. Jesus responded to the devil and said to him, Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hands, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Him only shall you serve. Don't go back to the devil to seek for help. Told you that you are saying, Amen, 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 Amen. You don't know that eh, the devil doesn't have new strategy. It is the same strategy he's using, but he has refined it. Ah, she did, man, look at Worship the Lord God alone. And all these things, Jesus later had. So, one of the things, the reasons why the devil is trying to intimidate you is that he wants you to come back to them. He wants you to come to a point where you say, ah, you know, you have been saying, I'm going to be faithful to my husband. I say, man, no could see bear. I want big daddies. What to man thought you They want you to come back to those style of big daddies, where you have a uh, what do they even call them? A baby, a, a baby father. They how do you call them? Sugar daddy. You know, sugar daddy is a pair. What's the current mom? Only what's the current name? You know, as we have baby mama, they have baby. Oh yeah, share your king can use name. She did the baby papa. That's what they want you to do. Don't go to that realm. Are you hearing me? Don't go to that realm. Don't let their intimidation move you into it. What will they give you? What will they give you that will not end? You just stay with the Lord. And you see God lifting you. Let's take the last one. And we close. The fifth thing the devil tries to use intimidation to achieve. They want you to be confused and disorganized. That's the state, the last thing the devil wants to, wants to do with you. He wants you to be confused. That's what the devil wants to do. That's why he's bringing all these reports, results, reports, results. Now, and listen, I will tell you this. I told, I think, um, this should be about four Sundays now. I said, see, as a child of God, if you get to a point in your life that you don't understand what is happening anymore, trust God that he cannot mismanage your life. I've been there before too. I've been at that point in my life where I didn't know what next. I tried to hear God, I didn't hear the situation was not palatable. <laughs> you know what I did? I trusted him. And at the end, I thanked him. Yeah, even when times were hard, they say, you knew what you were doing, Lord. Everything is working together for my good. That was when I loved that being at the Nuga song. Even when times were hard, I say, you knew what you were doing, Lord. It was confusing to me. Everything is working together for my good. I see, oh, 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 I see. Then you can take the next. Sha la la la. That's when you sing. So don't ever allow the devil to, to make you feel confused. Put here, hear me. One can give, mum, give. I'm just confused. Don't say that. Don't ever get to a point you say, I, I, who even know whether he answers prayer? 
I've done everything they say we should do, but I don't know why you have answered my prayer. Don't, that's a state of confusion. Don't, get, don't let the devil drive you to that lane. The Bible says, for everything worketh together for good, for them that what? Love the Lord. Even when you don't know what is happening, God can never mismanage your destiny. Even when you don't know what is happening, I want you to know that God can never mismanage your destiny. Even when you don't know what is happening, if you don't know what is happening, just be calm. Don't ever get to a point you now agree to be confused. Then you are allowed disorganization. Sir, Ama, if I begin to share personal testimonies here, ah, when I got to Ado and I was receiving, um, I give all the praises back to God. Those days, when I was raising the people that invited me to come and preach in my own house, it was like, ask my wife, in those days, there were times when I would be praying I didn't know that I was sowing a seed. I remember one of them, those days after service, because of what they were going through, I would instruct the person counting the money. I think it was the next topic that was counting the money that time. I would give them a second. 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 I would give Give them, let them eat. When I got, I got to this stage, very massive, big, big walk at the chapel there. And everybody was, was saying, this is the man that trained us. The school provost, uh, Barry Safe, Babala himself was there, his wife was there. Uh, the, uh, the school board, people were there. And all of them were coming. Sir, sir, sir. Ah, we see your training. Sir, we see your training. Yes. But it was not easy those days. It was like there was no future those days. They were loading my boots with different kind of things. It wasn't easy. But the fruit showed. So don't ever allow the devil to bring you to a point of confusion. Are you hearing me? No matter what they are saying. No matter how he intends to intimidate you. He could intimidate, try to intimidate you. Hear me, child of God. In your place of work, your boss may want to have sex with you. And you'll be saying, ah, Lord, God will intervene. God will. At times I've seen that God doesn't intervene. God may want to leave from that evil place. And you come back home with sack letter. That's when so many child of God will now say, and I've been faithful with my tithe. All my project offering have been faithful. Oh, I remember now, we need cement. Remind me before we close. We are, uh, somewhere. I, I said I would say this morning. We are flooring, but the cement got finished. Now, all the project offering have been given. Now, the only job that gave me joy. Job should not give you joy. There is nothing on earth that can give you joy. Children cannot give you joy. Marriage cannot give you joy. The only place of joy is in Christ. The only thing that gives me joy, along with the large way, with the large way, when they below me. Ah, I went, you have a jail or some guy, with the large way, with the large way. And to listen, here, here, there, by day. And the God that knows that he has seen something coming, that thing he has seen, maybe in 10 years' time. See, anytime you are faced with a situation that wants to confuse you, you know what you should do? Thank God. Thank God 
by saying, no, I don't understand what is happening. Let's rise up on our feet.